Hello everyone. In this video, we will be talking about reassignment count column in ServiceNow. So this is a column which is declared in the task table and we will be discussing what are its advantages, why it is used, why ServiceNow created this column out of the box and then we will see a demo as well. And finally, I will give you an assignment at the end of this video. Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Hardit Singh and if you are liking my content, please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit that like button. Let's quickly jump into this video. So this is how we will be going through the video. First, we will go through the introduction. Then we will see an example here on PPT. Then how it is declared on the task table. We will see that in service now. Then we will see the business rule, which is actually making this happen. And then we will see a quick demo. I will show you some service now support documents. And finally, I will give you an assignment. Link to all these topics is given in the description. If you want to jump to any specific topic, you can use those links. Firstly, the introduction word is reassignment count column. So this is a field on the task table called reassignment count, which records how many times a task has been reassigned. So it will count the number of times the assignment group field changes on an incident or maybe on problem or change ticket and one thing to note is if you are reassigning the ticket within the same team, so the assignment group remains same, but assigned to is changing again and again. So this count doesn't go up. So it is valid only on the assignment group table. Let's quickly take an example here. So for example, when you created a new incident and the assignment group was empty, the reassignment count column will have zero at that point of time. As soon as somebody changes it to service desk, the reassignment count changes to one. And then if somebody again changes it to cab approval, the reassignment count changes to two. I hope this will make sense to you now. Moving on, like I told you, this column is created on the task table. So all the tables which are inheriting tasks like incident, problem, change, and there are many, many more tables out of the box. And if you have created any custom tables which are inheriting task table, will have that column and will have that same functionality. So this is a very useful column which you can use in any of these tables to check how many times a ticket was reassigned. Now I will take you to service now and show you this column on the task table. I'm on my service now instance. I will type tables here. I will go to tables and I will have to search for the task table. So for that I will type here task and this is the task table which is one of the core tables of service now. So I will click here. I will click on this magnifier button and I will search for reassignment count. So you can see this column is declared as integer because it will always store 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. And like I told you, it will be inherited by all the child tables of task. Let's quickly see one of the tables again, maybe the incident table. For that, I will search for incident and I will go here. And you can see it is extending the table task. So it's one of the child tables of the task table. And let's quickly again try to search for the reassignment count. I will go here and search and you can see the reassignment count column is present here as well. But one thing to note is this shows that table is the task table, not the incident table. So if you have read inheritance properly in service now, you will know this concept. Now I will take you to the business rule where the increment is happening. For that, I will search for business rules under system definition and I will search for a business rule called reassignment counter. So you can see here at the bottom, there is a business rule called reassignment counter and it's created on the task table. So it will run for all the tables again, which are inheriting the task table. And we will quickly check the conditions when it runs and what's the actual code written behind that. Once it loads, you will see this is a before business rule which runs on every update. So every time a record is updated on the task table or on the child table, this particular business rule will run. If you want to learn more about business rules in service now, please click on the top right corner. And here, if you see the filter conditions are not given here because these are given in the advanced condition. And here you would see it says current dot assignment group dot changes. So whenever the assignment group field changes, it will change the current dot reassignment count to plus one. This is just one liner of code written to increment the reassignment counter. So for example, if it was zero, then it will change to one and then to two and so on. And now we will quickly see a demo for this. I will go to the incident table. 
and here I have already added reassignment count and if you see there is this incident which is ending in 120 we will try to update the assignment group for this table so right now it is called service desk we will change it to maybe cab approval I will save this and I will reload this and as soon as it will reload it should have one so you can see here the reassignment count has changed to one now let's quickly do another demo where I will empty this assignment group and let's see what happens after this so I will remove this assignment group I will save this and now the assignment group is empty and now I will again refresh this page and you see the reassignment count changes to two so as I showed you in the business rule anytime anything changes on the assignment group it will add one to the counter now I will go ahead and show you a couple of support documents from ServiceNow which are really useful. I will also paste the link to these support documents in the description of this video. So this is one of the important paragraphs which is on this document. We will go line by line in this. So this is the first line. It says even if the record is created with a null value any update to the group will increase the count. So for example initially the assignment group was blank when the incident was created and when you change it to something else it will increase the counter we just saw that the other way around where we emptied out the assignment group so it will increment it by one second point here to notice if a records assignment group is populated automatically as long as the update number is zero it will not count so if initially you are creating an incident or a problem or a change and you assign any assignment group to that or leave it empty the reassignment counter will remain to zero so when the record is created initially it will be zero the third point is however if the instance is slow the process used to update the group may change the group after insert intermittently and will show update number as one instead of zero which will increase the count so in rare scenarios where your network is slow or maybe the service now instance is slow and you are creating a new incident it might increase the counter to one which is very very rare but this is a thing which you should keep it in your mind that it might happen now moving on to the second support document where it says the field reassignment count is updated only when reassigning between groups and not users which we discussed earlier in the video as well and we saw why that happens because the condition is assignment group changes and we are increasing the reassignment counter now I want you to do an assignment where you change the functionality of this reassignment counter in your personal developer instances don't do it on the client instances where you change the logic of this reassignment counter so instead of updating it when it changes on the assignment group you have to change it on the assign to field so whenever a ticket is assigned to an individual and then reassign change it to that functionality so just think of that you will change the condition to current dot assign to dot changes and then the code will remain same so this is the only condition which you have to change so instead of touching out of the box business rule what I recommend is and even the service not documentation recommends is create a copy of that business rule deactivate the out of the box business rule and use the one which you have created for your assignment so let me know in comments if you have any questions any doubts or any feedback on this I hope this video was helpful to you and please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit that like button. Thanks for watching the video.